Okay, here we are. KBiz, so excited to be here, if you can't tell. Um, 2021, different KBiz than last year's 2020. I loved being in front of everyone down in Las Vegas last year. Um, the privilege to stand behind this signature kitchen suite, 48 inch range, and cook for everyone in person and actually let you guys see and smell and taste all the delicious food that was coming off this um, beautiful appliance uh, was a pleasure. This year's a little different, so we are virtual. Um, I get the privilege of being patched in virtually from this beautiful facility, my home facility, Signature Kitchen Suite Experience and Design Center in the beautiful Napa Valley, California. I know some of you out there have been here before. I cannot wait to see you all again in person here at the facility for now. Thank you for letting me join you virtually at KBiz. It's the next best thing. Um, I know you can't taste and enjoy this food, but you can watch. I'm making all the recipes available on SignatureKitchenSuite.com. So after you witness all these beautiful demos, first thing, go out, purchase yourself a brand new 48 inch Signature Kitchen Suite range. Go download the recipes, then you can cook them like a pro. Um, so for today, we are making dessert. It is dessert time. This could be a very decadent breakfast. Um, I like it for dessert. Breakfast, it's great. I'll, sh I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you how to do it for breakfast. Um, we're making Bananas Foster, my version of. Bananas Foster is a classic. Uh, and it's one of those desserts that you get set on fire. So who doesn't love that? The cook, get, the cook loves it because he gets to play with fire. The guests love it, you put on a show, and it's delicious. So, let's get rolling. Bananas Foster highlights two, three modalities on this oven, you on the range. You need a very even flat surface to cook crepes. Crepes are just thin pancakes. I think I forgot to mention, I served my Bananas Foster over a delicious sweet crepe. Um, and then we'll garnish with a little, little whipped cream or vanilla ice cream. Um, but I like to make crepes on the induction. Like a pancake, you need a very griddle similar surface. So I put my nice flat pan, this is a 14 inch pan, on my induction surface. I'm gonna heat it up to eight is the second to highest setting. So we would call that medium high to high. Um, due to time constraints, uh, I have prepared ahead of time a few crepes. I'm basically demoing this Bananas Foster for four portions. Um, and there's a couple people around here that you can't see. So we're all gonna enjoy some Bananas Foster um, in a little bit. So I have pre-made a couple crepes. I'm gonna show you how to make one perfect. Pre-making the crepes allows me to use my warming oven. The range, 48 inch range here is equipped with warming settings on both ovens, okay? So if you're making crepes or making pancakes for four, five, six, eight people, take advantage of your warming setting, use that, okay? So I'm preheating my pan. I have a big stick of butter. Like a chef, I'm just gonna rub the butter in the pan because that's my, if you have, feel you have too much butter, which is a rarity, um, you can wipe a little bit out. I like to keep my crepe butter, batter in a pitcher. I don't like to ladle it out, it makes a mess. Keep it in something easily pourable. Crepe batter is basically pancake batter that's really, really thin and watery. It has a lot more milk in it and you can pour it. Or you can keep it in a squirt bottle. That's a neat one too. So, crepes go like this. You wanna get a little butter in the pan, and pour a couple ounces, and then as soon as it gets in there, you wanna swirl it. There's no other way to get it perfect. Then set it back on your induction. Look at how awesome my induction plate is. I don't know, I don't get to work with a lot of other ranges, but I am, it's, I'm yet to find a home range that I can put a 14 inch pan on the induction and the induction doesn't shut off. The parameters of my heating hobs here are amazing on the um, Signature Kitchen Suite range. So, nice, Medium, even heat for the crepe. You want it evenly brown. You don't want all these little black spots over it like ugly pancakes, like burned pancakes. You'll see it start to bubble up. That means it's getting hot. 
and you can, with your little palette knife or spatula, you want to release it from the side of the pan. Always use non-stick for crepes, like you're cooking an omelet or something like that, okay? So now it is released. We're going to let it brown up a little more. In the meantime, we're going to go down to our warming oven. Ow! See, just a little piece of oven paper. Here's my stack of pre-made. See how nice and even they are? That's because I made them on the Signature Kitchen Suite induction. And see how paper thin they are? I can see through them. That's what you want with the crepe. If it's any thicker than that, it's a pancake. The French chef will fire you. He'll call it a pancake. You'll be fired. Um, you'll see them browning around the edge. You probably can't see that. You'll smell them. They'll start to smell like cooking pancakes, browning pancakes. Now, I don't expect everyone to flip these up in the air like magic. So, just like that, with your iron fingers. You can use a rubber spatula and flip them um, like they do on the streets of France. They have a little crepe tool that they flip over. But, we got a nice brown crepe. We are going to add this. They're so paper thin, the second side needs literally like 20 seconds to cook. Okay, nice crepes. Crepes are going back in the warming oven. Now, we're going to shut this off and we're going to go main event. Time for bananas, fusters. Okay, so you want nice high heat. The name of the game with bananas fuster, power, big, hot, flames, all of that stuff. So you want to start with about four tablespoons of butter. It's basically a butter and sugar sauce. Yeah, I think it's about a half a cup of brown sugar. I'm going to call it a half cup of brown sugar. Now, go on, don't go on like crazy high. Because if it gets too hot before all the butter melts, the sugar is going to start to caramelize and burn. You basically want to make a butter and sugar syrup and you want it to all melt together. If it doesn't melt together, you're going to have some problems. At this point, you can go ahead and add your spice mix. I have a little paste. I have mixed my vanilla, my cinnamon, and my nutmeg so I can add it all at once. Like why? This is time, you know, you got to go quick. Once you have sugar in the pan, you have to work quickly. And if you are cooking crepes here at the same time, you have to work very quickly. Why make three moves to get your spice in? Put them all in one, add them all at once. They go in the same time, okay? Because you got to go quick with this one. Look at that. And that is on seven. That's not even on my highest setting. So, like I said, you got to go quick. About half a banana per person is what you do here. I like to remove the ends. I like to just slice it and peel it. Peeled banana. Remove the end, remove the end, little slice. Peeled banana. Don't peel it like a gorilla would at the zoo because it'll get all messed up and it won't slice nice. You can smell it. I know. I wish you guys could smell it. It's a buttery, sugary. It's going to caramel syrup. You can smell the vanilla. You can smell everything in there. We're going to slice our bananas and get them in. Leave them kind of thick. Bananas, you want to use really ripe bananas for this. Um, bananas are already a soft product and you don't want them to cook to mush. Uh, because of the size of my pan and my eyeball, my chef eye says I need more bananas for that amount of gear. So trust your eye, trust your experience. We're going to cut up a third banana. I'm cutting these on a bias. You can cut them straight across. Okay, so. Mm. See nice even heat? Nothing's burning. Beautiful. Bananas are going to go straight in. You want the bananas to cook 
two, three minutes. Like I said, bananas are already soft. If you bite into a banana, it already has the texture of cooked fruit, cooked vegetables. So don't get crazy, okay? It should be very, very buttery and very, very decadent looking. Okay, that's kind of the whole deal with Bananas Foster. The brown sugar is starting to caramelize a little bit, sticking to all these buttery bananas. And even though I haven't made this for quite some time, it's a classic, but I haven't made it for quite some time, it's looking just perfect. If you're so inclined and skilled, go ahead, give them a little flip flip. Then, at the very end here, you're going to turn this thing on about, like I said, bananas cook very, very fast. Then you're going to turn this burner up to high. Okay? Here's the fun part. Here's the part I hope I do right. What we are going to do, we are going to, with my little slotted spoon, I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this butter that we've been using to perfectly cook these bananas. Because you want the sauce, once you get the alcohol in, you want it to emulsify. You don't want it to be greasy with butter coming out. So if you feel like you have too much butter, just dump a little out. Then, while your burner is on high, this is a mixture of dark rum and banana liqueur. You can use straight dark rum. I like to get a little banana liqueur in mine. You are going to remove this from the heat, but while it's still very hot, you're going to pour in the rum and the banana liqueur and you are going to return it to the heat and get a textbook flambe on your signature kitchen suite 23,000 BTU burner. If you want to sit here and play with fire, you just keep dumping, dumping rum in like they do at Benihana's or whatever and uh, um, it's cool, right? Your guests are like, wow, not only does he have the most amazing range on the market, he knows how to use it. So. The deal with Bananas Foster is when the flames go away, actually this is, I should be scurrying it to the, to the presentation table right now as they're burning out. That's how it, you would do it at a fancy restaurant somewhere down in New Orleans. But um, when the flames go out, it's ready. That's how you know it's ready, when it's no longer on fire. So you have this delicious, decadent, oh my God, we're eating, we're, I'm gonna eat these uh, as soon as I am off of live feed. Uh, so. Here's the deal. Your crepes come out. You shoot over here for a plate. My bad. My bad, I didn't have my plate set up. Okay, so. So that was a pretty simple dish. I only used my induction and my gas burner. I'm gonna take advantage of all the space I have in front of me and I'm gonna spread out. I'm gonna put my crepes here. I'm gonna put my sauce here. I'm gonna put my leftover rum here for a little pop when you guys are done watching me. And I'm gonna put my finished plate here. And we're gonna build a nice little banana. So, you, so the deal with crepes is, I always use the one on the bottom first. See how I flip the whole stack? Flip the whole stack. The one on the bottom is the one you made first. And it will start be starting to collect a little steam down there. So use that one first, start in the bottom. You want to fold your crepe like a handkerchief. Fold it in half, fold it in half, like a, what are they, like a pocket square, I don't, I don't wear those things. But anyways, kind of like that. Fold it in half, fold it in half. Here's the deal. If you wanted to stuff this with bananas, now would be the time. Put them in there and then lay that over here. I'm going to be a little more rustic. I'm going to fold the crepe one more time so it's a little thicker. See? Beautiful. Your crepes should have these frilly, frilly, crispy edges. One crepe. See? Beautiful. Even. I couldn't get that if I did not have Signature Kitchen Suite induction, even induction heat. Fold. 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 Two. We'll just go. We'll do all four. We'll do all four. This will be delicious. Make a little pinwheel of your crepes. Now, here's the deal, and this is the actual bananas part. You kind of got to follow the recipe. Bananas Foster's a bananas Foster. Here's the deal, dealer's choice part. Hey, you can put on the bottom, whatever. Put this over French toast for brunch. Amazing. Put it over a real pancake. 
put it over waffles. Bananas foster waffles with whipped creme fraiche for breakfast. Mm. Um, I like it with crepes for like a dessert situation. And I like to garnish mine. You can do creme fraiche, you can do whipped cream, chantilly cream with some flavor in it. I love vanilla ice cream on mine. I like the hot meets cold, and I'm just a sucker for classic American dessert a la mode. Um, that's what I'm gonna do with mine. When you make this at home, you make it your own, you put whatever you want on top of it. So, bananas in syrup. Look, they're not mush. The bananas should still be bananas. They should still look like bananas. And honestly, even though I have plenty of experience in pastry, my background is in savory cookery, but I think this is my favorite Capez recipe, is this Bananas Foster. Set that there for the chef. I don't know if these are in the recipe that I have provided, but some toasted pecans. And there you have it. Bananas Foster over sweet crepes for, technically for four. I'm gonna eat all of this for breakfast with a scoop of vanilla ice cream on it. Um, so, there you go. Once again, thank you for letting me show off the Signature Kitchen Suite 48 inch range to you guys. Um, click the button to reach out to one of our wonderful Signature Kitchen Suite Sales Associates, they're happy to meet up with you during KBiz and walk you through all of our amazing appliances and our full line of built-ins. Um, and once again, this recipe and any other recipe that you have seen me perform for you at KBiz, all available, SignatureKitchenSuite.com. I look forward to seeing everyone in real life at the EDC here in Napa, or hopefully by KBiz 2022, we can actually do this in person. Thanks for having me virtually. It's been great. Till next time. Thank you, KBiz.